Have you ever felt like a candle burning at both ends, constantly giving until there's nothing left but a flicker? Well, you're not alone. Today we peer into the echoes of ancient wisdom that can protect you from burnout, while simultaneously kindling your inner brightness. Welcome, warriors of the modern world. You're here because you are different. You love deeply, give freely, and question if it's enough. Let's explode a myth right here, right now. Disregarding yourself while caring for others is not heroism. It's a recipe for disaster. Today, we explore the intricate dance of balancing generosity with self-nourishing. We unlock the powerful teachings of Stoicism and examine how these ancient tenets can transform your life in our tumultuous world. The cost of overgifting. Visualize this. You're holding a cup. This cup symbolizes your energy, your vitality, your essence. Now think about constantly draining from this cup to fill others, friends, family, colleagues. They all approach you with their empty vessels, and without second thought, you flow. It feels gratifying, doesn't it? Being the dependable rock in a turbulent storm. But here's the catch. What happens once your cup runs dry? What happens when you reach deep for that last shred of energy, only to find nada? This, my friends, is the uphill path of overgiving, a pitfall that captures even the best of us. We forfeit sleep, self-care and sanity for the sake of meeting others' needs. Uniformed with exhaustion, we mistakenly believe it flaunts our worth. But let me illuminate some truth. Constant self-sacrifice isn't sustainable. It isn't even truly beneficial. When we're running on fumes, the quality of our help deteriorates. We become irritable, resentful, and even bitter. Is this the representation of yourself you desire to share with the world? Enter the Stoics with their ever-unchanging wisdom. Epictetus, a man who found freedom through philosophy, noted, He is a wise man who does not grieve for the things which he has not, but rejoices for those which he has. Translated, True strength isn't about giving everything away. It's about acknowledging and cherishing your resources and deploying them attentively. The Stoics comprehended that self-care is not selfish, it's necessary. To be genuinely beneficial and compassionate, we must ensure our cup is filled. So I ask you, how full is your cup right now? Are you pouring from economies of scale, or are you scraping the dregs, offering others nothing but the dried remnants of your former vitality? It's time to reevaluate the script, understand the craft of sustainable generosity, and realize how setting boundaries and prioritizing self-care can actually render you more generous, impactful, and infinitely more gratified. The Garden Metaphor Picture, if you will, two gardens positioned side by side. One, a lush haven bursting with vivid life forms and succulent fruits. The other, desolated, overrun with weeds, barely clinging to existence. Now ask yourself, which gardener has more to contribute to their community? This is the essence of stoic self-care. Attending to your own garden first isn't selfish, it's necessary. It enables you to genuinely assist others in a sustainable way. Perspectives from Marcus Aurelius, the philosopher-emperor, enlighten us that what stands in the way becomes the way. Your self-care is not an impediment to your generosity. It's the very track to sustainable benevolence. By cherishing your well-being, you create an abundance from which to give. You're not depleting yourself, but circulating your surplus. This is the Stoics' take on sustainable assistance. Think about it. A flourishing garden doesn't just feed its caregiver. It beautifies the scenery, shelters wildlife, offers harvest to share with neighbors. It becomes a wellspring of inspiration and sustenance for the entire community. So I challenge you. Be that garden. Nurture your strengths. Nourish your intellect. Care for your emotional wellness. Create an outpour of vitality that naturally extends to those surrounding you. Remember, in taking care of yourself, 
you are not merely serving your own interests. You are preparing yourself to aid others more proficiently, more joyfully, and for the distant future. Harness True Generosity Let's dive into the heart of true generosity. Not the kind that leaves you drained and resentful, but the kind that fills you up and lights you from within. Seneca, the great Stoic philosopher, taught that actual giving comes without the expectation of return. It's not a transaction or a debt to be repaid. It's a pure expression of your values and your humanity. When you give without strings attached, something magical happens. You tap into a wellspring of joy beyond the fleeting pleasure of receiving gratitude or recognition. The act itself becomes the reward. Modern psychology backs this up. Studies show that selfless giving activates the pleasure centers in our brains, reduces stress, and increases overall well-being. The importance of voluntary giving. But here's the crucial part. This only works when the giving is voluntary, not compelled by guilt or obligation. So, I want you to ask yourself, are you giving because you genuinely want to, or because you think you should? Are you seeking validation and approval, or expressing your deepest values? True generosity isn't about quantity. It's not about who gives the most time, money, or energy. It's about quality. It's about giving from a place of abundance, not scarcity. Try this. Next time you have the opportunity to give, do it anonymously. Whether it's a kind deed, a donation, or a helping hand, do it without anyone knowing it was you. Feel the difference when you give, without any possibility of recognition or return. That's the power of true generosity. By embracing this stoic principle, you'll find that generosity becomes not a duty, but a source of profound fulfillment. You'll give not because you must, but because you can't imagine doing otherwise. The art of saying no. We've talked about giving, now let's tackle one of the most crucial skills in your Stoic toolkit, the art of saying no. Epictetus, who rose from enslaved person to revered philosopher, wisely noted, if you don't wish to be a hothead, don't feed your habit. Try as a first step to remain calm and count the days you haven't been angry. Now replace angry with overwhelmed, and you've got a powerful stoic technique for boundary setting. It's about recognizing what feeds your stress, and consciously choosing not to indulge it. Saying no isn't about being selfish or unkind. It's about being honest with yourself and others. It's about recognizing your limits and honoring them. It's an act of integrity. Consider this story. A young apprentice took on every task his master gave him, never refusing. He worked tirelessly, impressing everyone with his dedication. But when a crucial project came, he was too exhausted to complete it effectively. The master said, In trying to do everything, you fail to do what truly matters. This is the pitfall of excessive help. By saying yes to everything, we dilute our ability to make a real impact where it counts. We spread ourselves too thin and everyone loses. Use discernment when saying yes. So, I challenge you to practice discernment. Before you say yes to any request, ask yourself, is this aligned with my values? Can I give this my best effort? Will this leave me with enough energy for my true priorities? Remember, every yes is implicitly a no to something else. When you say yes to staying late at work, you might say no to quality time with your family. When you say yes to a friend's every request, you might say no to your needs. Choose wisely. Your time and energy are precious resources. Allocate them with the same care you'd give to any valuable asset. By mastering the art of saying no, you're not closing yourself off from the world. Instead, you're opening yourself up to saying a wholehearted yes to what truly matters. This is the path to living with purpose and impact, the very essence of stoic wisdom and finding balance. Now, let's tackle the art of balance, 
a concept as old as philosophy, yet as relevant as your last notification. Though not a Stoic, Aristotle gave us the golden mean, the sweet spot between extremes. In our context, it balances selfless giving and rigid self-protection. Imagine a tightrope walker, lean too far in either direction and you'll fall. The key is the constant, mindful adjustment. Here's how to apply this wisdom. Step 1. Conduct a life audit. List your commitments, your goals, and your daily activities. Now, ruthlessly categorize them. What fills you up and what drains you? What aligns with your values and what's just noise? Step 2. Embrace the power of hell yeah or no. When faced with a request or opportunity, if it's not a hell yeah, it's a no. This simple rule can transform your life, freeing up energy for what truly matters. But balance isn't just about managing external demands. It's about internal harmony too. The Stoics taught ataraxia, the tranquility of the soul. Cultivate this through daily reflection. Ask yourself, am I living by my values? Am I growing or just going through the motions? Remember, balance isn't a destination, it's a journey. You'll wobble and sometimes fall. The key is to keep adjusting and keep learning. Epictetus said, He is a wise man who does not grieve for the things which he has not, but rejoices for those which he has. Find joy in the process of creating balance. Celebrate small wins. Learn from missteps. By mastering this balance, you're improving your life and setting an example for others. You're showing that being kind, successful and at peace is possible. This, my friends, is practical wisdom in action. Self-respect and boundaries. Now let's dive deep into a concept that can revolutionize your life. The transformative power of self-respect and boundaries. Marcus Aurelius wrote, You have power over your mind, not outside events. Realize this, and you will find strength. This is the cornerstone of setting healthy boundaries. Understand this. Boundaries aren't walls. They're bridges to healthier relationships with others and yourself. Here's your action plan. Step 1. Define your non-negotiables. What are your core values? What behaviors will you not tolerate? Write them down. Make them real. Step 2. Communicate clearly. No hints, no passive aggression. State your boundaries with calm confidence. Remember, you're not asking for permission, you're stating a fact. Step 3. Prepare for pushback. When you start setting boundaries, some people won't like it. That's okay. Their reaction is about them, not you. Step 4. Practice self-compassion. Setting boundaries can feel uncomfortable at first. Be kind to yourself as you learn and grow. Step 5. Celebrate small wins. Each time you honor your boundaries, you're building self-respect. Acknowledge that. Now let's address a common fear. Won't setting boundaries make me selfish? Absolutely not. Healthy boundaries make you a better friend, partner and colleague. Why? Because you're showing up as your authentic self, not a resentful, burnt-out shell. Seneca said, We suffer more often in imagination than in reality. Most of the negative consequences we fear from setting boundaries never materialize. Instead, we gain respect from others and ourselves. Remember, you teach people how to treat you. By respecting yourself enough to set and maintain boundaries, you're creating a template for all your relationships. You're not just changing your life, but influencing your entire social ecosystem. This is true strength. This is genuine kindness. This is the path to becoming the best version of yourself. The ripple effect. Now, let's explore one of the most potent concepts in personal development. The ripple effect of self-improvement. Imagine dropping a stone into a still pond. The ripples spread outward, affecting the entire surface. That's what happens when you start prioritizing self-care and setting healthy boundaries. 
Pema Chodron understood this when he wrote, What you do for yourself, any gesture of kindness, any gesture of gentleness, any gesture of honesty and clear seeing toward yourself will affect how you experience your world. Let's break this down. 1. Modeling behavior. When you respect your boundaries, you teach others to do the same. Your actions speak louder than words. 2. Increased capacity. By taking care of yourself, you have more to give to others, and your generosity becomes sustainable. 3. Authenticity. When you're true to yourself, you inspire others to do the same. Your courage becomes contagious. 4. Improved relationships. Clear boundaries lead to more transparent communication and deeper connections. 5. Positive energy. Self-care isn't selfish. It's a way of bringing your best self to every interaction. Here's a challenge for you. For the next week, commit to one daily act of self-care and one instance of setting a clear boundary. Notice how it affects your interactions. Notice how people respond to the more authentic, energized you. You might face resistance at first. Change can be uncomfortable for you and others, but stay the course. As Epictetus said, first, say to yourself what you would be, and then do what you have to do. Remember, you're not just changing your life. You're creating a new standard for your community. You're showing that it's possible to be kind without being a doormat and be successful without burning out. This is how real change happens. Not through grand gestures, but through consistent, authentic living, one person at a time, creating ripples that eventually become waves. You have more influence than you realize. Your journey toward balance and self-respect can be the catalyst someone else needs to start their journey. So I ask you, are you ready to create those ripples? Are you ready to be the change you want to see in your world? The choice is yours, and the time is now. Remember, as Theodore Roosevelt said, it is not the critic who counts, not the man who points out how the strong man stumbles, or where the doer of deeds could have done them better. The credit belongs to the man who is actually in the arena. You are that man in the arena. You're not just surviving this chaotic world, you're learning to thrive in it. You're becoming the master of your fate, the captain of your soul. This path isn't for the faint of heart. It demands courage, discipline, and unwavering commitment. But the rewards, they're beyond measure. As you step out into the world armed with these stoic principles, know this. You're not just changing yourself, you're becoming a beacon of strength for others, a rock in the storm, as Joe O. Willink, a modern stoic warrior, puts it bluntly, discipline equals freedom. Your newfound self-discipline, boundaries, and self-respect are the tools that will set you free. So here's your mission, should you choose to accept it. 1. Take action today, not tomorrow, not when you feel ready, now. 2. Embrace discomfort. Growth lives outside your comfort zone. 3. Lead by example. Be the change you want to see in the world. Remember, we suffer more often in imagination than in reality, so stop imagining and start doing. You've got this. We believe in you. The Stoic community has your back. Now, go out there and show the world what true strength looks like. Not just physical strength, but mental toughness, emotional resilience, and unshakable integrity. This is your moment. Seize it. And if you're hungry for more wisdom, challenges, and growth, you know where to find us. The Stoic community is always here, ready to fuel your journey to greatness. Stay strong, stay Stoic, and never, ever give up on becoming the best version of yourself.